talk is money, honey. All we talk is money. All we talk is money. It's like bees to the honey. Honey, money, honey, money, honey. It's the sauce cast, baby. All right, guys. Diddy's been a bad boy. Welcome to the Sauce Cast. I'm Adam Sauzik. Today we're doing an entire breakdown of what the hell is going on with Diddy. I got papers, I got notes, I've got stories, I've got facts, I've got allegations. So much stuff is coming out, even as we speak, that I'm literally looking at my phone. We got Malik over here checking Twitter, breaking news. Shout out to Malik, give him a shout. Um, the, the story keeps evolving and evolving and evolving. So what we're going to do today is break down a few things. Um, we're going to discuss the facts. We're going to discuss the allegations, the rumors, the hearsay. Uh, how did even Diddy get in this position? Uh, I was talking to um, my younger buddy, Jaden, 19, 20 years old. He only knows Diddy for the last 10 years. He's like, oh, the Ciroc guy. I'm like, Ciroc? Like, for somebody that grew up loving hip-hop, we'll talk about that. Ciroc isn't even, like, top 10 on my list when I think of Diddy. I think of Biggie. I think of Bad Boy. I think of hip-hop. I think of East Coast, West Coast. I think of Beef. I think of Tupac. I think of Should Night. I think of Diddy being a billionaire. I think of I'll Be Missing You with Faith Evans. So... For the 30-plus crowd out there, you're probably a little bit more familiar with that side of Diddy. For the 30 and under crowd, you might not even know how freaking big Diddy was back in the day. So today we're breaking down all that and discussing what is next for billionaire, producer, rapper, entrepreneur, mogul, sex trafficker, billionaire, Sean Diddy Combs. And at the end of the end of the show, I want to get your thoughts on what the hell you think is happening here. Malik's going to put up a poll. Whether you think he's 100% guilty, innocent until proven guilty, or completely innocent. Those are the three things uh, you're going to see in the poll. So, um, did Diddy do it? Let's get into some of the facts. So, a lot to digest. We're going to filter it down and get this thing done for you. Okay. First and foremost, breaking news yesterday. The feds, uh, Homeland Security specifically raided Diddy's houses, estates, mansions in Miami and LA. We're going to pull up that story for right now. It's all part of a New York criminal investigation. This is following interviews with individuals who have made allegations about Diddy. Uh, his sons, two sons, have both been arrested. Um, you have the video? Let's play it. Here that we're getting this information from, we were actually the first ones here with about 30 different law enforcement vehicles at least. There are three Bearcats on scene here. This just all unfolded, Sandra, I would say, less than 10 minutes ago. We got here even before the crime scene tape came up. So uh, we're just down the hill. If you look up this street where Tony is right now to the right, you'll see one of those Bearcats and law enforcement. On the other side of those bushes, basically, is that home that is registered to Bad Boy Films, which is part of Bad Boy Entertainment. And the home in particular is registered not only to Bad Boy Films, but to one of P. Diddy's daughters. They are heavily armed and uh, they've been very tactful, would probably be the best word to use as they uh, made entry into this home uh, this afternoon. We actually watched them as they made through their made their way through one of these uh, side gates, and as soon as they got inside the home, one of the things, the first things they did was made their way into this garage that you see is open right there. Now, they did take a couple people into custody. We witnessed that. Now, are they under arrest? Are they just being uh, asked about what they know? That I can't answer, but I can tell you there's three people right there that were taken into custody. 
custody were, were inside that home at the time of the raid. We did see a bunch of investigators going in, making the raid in there and clearing that as well. So they're going to do a thorough search as they conduct this raid. And so far, Stu, from what I understand and from Haley on the ground there, they have not seen and we have not seen from our vantage point any sign of Sean Combs, the 54-year-old who is believed to be the property owner of this. Okay, so why is this like so, I guess, important to me? You see the end of the video, that water right there? You can even show it right now. Yeah, I live five minutes from there. I grew up in Miami Beach. This is Star Island. The rich of the rich of the richest live there. There's a few major islands in Miami. Star Island is the top one. You have Hibiscus Island. You have Palm Island. You have Fisher Island. You have um, the Venetian the elite live in these places. You don't get on these islands unless you're invited. And I can't, I've been in this area all my life. Uh, I'll explain some of the parties I've been to in Miami, in LA. It's no secret. I've been in the nightlife world forever before I got into finance for the last 15 years, before I got into podcasting. Very weird to see this going on literally in your neighborhood. Um, they said here, that the, the home was registered to what, Malik? One of his daughters? Yeah, it was registered to his daughter. Okay, one of his daughters. By the way, um, Diddy has seven kids from four women. Um, we'll get into the latest allegations from his ex, uh, Cassie. Um, that's some weird stuff that's going on right there. So while all this is going on, where's Diddy? Where's Diddy? Where's Diddy? Well, uh, his private jet was tracked to the Caribbean islands of Antigua, okay? While he's, his homes are being raided in Miami, Star Island, and in L.A., but apparently he wasn't even on board the planes. So amidst the raids in Los Angeles and Miami homes, Dizzy, Diddy wasn't even there. Diddy was at a Miami Opelika executive airport pacing around the customs office. So apparently he's in Miami. By the way, it's March. Uh, you know who else is in Miami? Everybody. Uh, it's been Miami Music Week, Ultra, all the biggest DJs, all the big, biggest producers, music hit makers. Everybody is here in Miami right now. So I'm not shocked to find out that he's in Miami. Um, reports suggest that he was waiting on companions being questioned by federal agents. Um, there are allegations out there that he has actually been arrested as well. There was a story by, I believe, was it Newsweek? Uh, Malik? Yeah, Newsweek. Pull up that story real quick. That has not been fact-checked. So fact-check, has P. Diddy been arrested by the FBI? Apparently, he has not. But again, there's so many stories happening every single second. Just as we're preparing to start the show, new story shows up. Half hour before the show, his drug mule was arrested. We have that story? Yes, right here. So, alleged drug mule arrested on drug charges. What does he look like? During run-ins with the feds, this guy was his alleged drug mule. So, this is facts. No opinions here. This guy was just arrested. Where's Diddy? Uh, apparently, he has not been arrested yet. I don't know how this works. By the way, I was having dinner last night with one of my best friends. Um, worked as a local TV anchor in Miami, Channel 10. He was also on CNN, uh, NBC, a number of outlets. When he saw how many federal agents showed up to Diddy's house, you know the first thing he said, Malik? He goes, wow, they spent a lot of money to do this. It wasn't just a couple agents. It wasn't a dozen agents. It looked like dozens of agents, and they didn't just knock on the door, dude. They busted down the front gate unannounced and just went in. So with that being said, uh, those are the facts, what's going on right now. Let's get into some of the allegations, okay? 
Um, charges, specifically, sex trafficking, sex trafficking of a minor, rape, and other alleged sexual abuses. So let me just speak to that for a second. We all know uh, in the last handful of years, the Me Too movement was pervasive. And in many cases, rightfully so. Uh, the names you can think of, Harvey Weinstein, top of the list. Bill, Co Bill Cosby, top of the list. Jeffrey Epstein, top of the list. Dude, what happened with R. Kelly? I believe I can fly. No, dude, I believe you're going to be in jail for potentially the rest of your life, R. Kelly. Music, producers, billionaires, TV stars, jail. For how long? Potentially forever. Epstein, Epstein himself. We know that. Um, on the other hand, there's been also people, alleged sex traffickers, sexual abusers, uh, namely Andrew Tate. We've interviewed him multiple times. You know where I stand on the Andrew Tate allegations? Bullshit. We saw what happened with Johnny Depp. Turned out to be bullshit. Amber Heard, Amber Turd. Uh, Russell Brand. We're seeing what's going on there. I think it's sort of a crock of BS. Those are my opinions. Those are my opinions. But, you know, we did a podcast two weeks ago with Tim Dillon on the PBD podcast. And our friend Vinny on the podcast was like, bro, he did it 100%. You can't believe it. I said, look, I don't know what the hell's going on here. I'm kind of on the fence here. There's certain people, the Weinsteins of the world, the Cosbys of the world, the Epsteins of the world, the R. Kellys of the world, uh, did it. There's certain people, Andrew Tate, Johnny Depp, Russell uh, Brand. Bro, I don't, I don't know if those guys did anything sort of fabricated. That's kind of, quite frankly, where I sort of had Diddy in the middle. Like, is he here? Is he here? At this point, I kind of think it's a little bit safer to say he's sort of in the Cosby, Epstein, Weinstein category, allegedly. You know, I, the word allegedly, you know, it's an interesting word. I said this all the time. I go, if there's one word you kind of don't want associated with your name, it's allegedly. Because there's always something bad after allegedly. You never hear, allegedly, he spends his time feeding the homeless. Allegedly, he volunteers uh, to give kids without parents time with, with the father. No, it's always allegedly rape, allegedly sex trafficking, allegedly some other wild ass shit. Never good to have allegedly next to your name. Not good. But in this particular case of Diddy, uh, I've quite clearly gone from, yeah, I don't know these allegations, to like, all right, let's see the proof. Let's see the guilt. Because I still believe in this country, innocent until proven guilty. Um, I know you're running a poll. I did a poll on my Instagram. I don't know if you have that. I did this uh, last night before even, you know, a lot of these new uh, headlines hit the scenes. Do you have those results on yep. my Instagram poll? Malik? Yeah, I got it. Show that real quick. So, Diddy, guilty AF, 69%. Innocent until proven guilty, 29%. Diddy is innocent, 2%. Let me tell you something. In any poll you ever do, there's something called a margin of error. It's usually around 2 to 4%, meaning... 2% saying that he's completely innocent is basically next to nothing. The vast majority of people, 69% are like, yo, he did it. Again, still believe in the rule of law, still believe in innocent until proven guilty. Let's see what's going on there. So at the end of the day, what we know, here's this is our poll right here. Yeah, it's currently. running right now live on YouTube. So very, very similar. almost very similar to what we did last night on my Instagram my Instagram is Saws Talks Money. Obviously, YouTube, you're here on the SawsCast channel. Thank you guys for being here. Thank you for subscribing. So at the end of the day, when all the dust settles, if all these allegations prove to be true, our friend Diddy, the bad boy himself, bad boy records, bad boy entertainment, could be facing life in prison, a.k.a. death row. 
So we all know <laughs> Diddy's and Biggie's biggest beef was between Tupac and Suge Knight. Malik, what was the name of their record label? Death Row, Death Death Row, Row Records. Records. So a lot of stuff is sort of uh, coming to light here that sort of makes sense. Uh, history sometimes repeats itself. But so, do you think he has like any accomplices or you think Diddy's just on his own and he's the ringleader behind this whole thing that's going on? I mean, clearly he's the ringleader, but they just arrested his drug, drug mule. mule. They've arrested his two sons. Let's see how the facts play out here. Um, Diddy, uh, you have all our attention now. Um, not all attention is good attention. So that is what's going on here with Diddy. Um, we have some clips, some clips from the 90s, clips from the 2000s, clips from today. We're going to show you that. Um, Diddy is a billionaire. He's a full-on billionaire. So uh, how many rappers are billionaires? Uh, some that come to mind, well, Kanye was a billionaire until he got a little uh, lippy with his thoughts, let's just say. Um, Diddy, Dr. Dre, Jay-Z. I think that's it. Is there anybody else on this list that's a billionaire? So Diddy is an elite company. Elite company. Um, wild what's going on with that. So Bad Boy Records in New York started as a startup. Startup turned into him being an entrepreneur. Entrepreneur turned him into being into a producer, worldwide producer. Uh, take that, take that, take that. Biggie, he was Biggie's um, sort of right-hand man. Biggie was a star, if you didn't know that. Before Diddy, it was Biggie. Um, Suge Knight ran Death Row Records, but Tupac was a star. That was the beef that was going on there. Diddy, rapper, mogul, billionaire, now potential sex trafficker. Diddy has been a very bad boy. Um, let's get into some of the um, larger context here with Diddy. Um, Diddy's a little bit bi bipolar. And what do I mean by that? Buddy changes his name every three to five years. I mean, I don't know if you can rattle off all the names uh, when you think of Diddy, but Diddy is just the latest name that he's calling himself. If you were a hip hop fan in the 90s, you know his name was Puff Daddy, all right? And then Puff Daddy turned into Puffy, and then a few years later, Puffy turned into P. Diddy, and then P. Diddy turned into Diddy, and at one point, he actually changed his name to Brother Love, quote unquote, in 2017 for his 48th birthday, I'm someone different, this is his quote. So my new name is Love, AKA Brother Love. Um, if Diddy ends up in prison, uh, he's definitely gonna be getting some of that Brother Love in the showers. We're gonna see what happens with that. Um, allegations, let's get into some of the allegations so we fully understand what Diddy is dealing with. Um, here we go, allegations. Brief look at Diddy's history of controversies and allegations. This is from Rolling Stone. Rolling Stone knows a thing or two about music. Uh, at the end of the day, Diddy, uh, as much as you think he's a liquor guy, Ciroc guy, this guy's been in the music business for four decades. He's in the music business. So here are some of the highlights of that. 1991 CCNY tragedy at a basketball event organized by Combs ends in tragedy with nine dead. 1995, Jake Robles shooting altercation outside of Atlanta nightclub leads to Robles's death, implicating Combs and Suge Knight. Conflicting accounts emerge. Combs denies involvement in the shooting. 1998, Combs assaults Steve Stute over disputed, mu disputed music video scene leading to criminal charges. Combs ad admits wrongdoing, sentenced to anger management class. Uh, it doesn't end there. 1999, shooting in a New York nightclub. Altercation in the New York club results in gunfire. Combs and basically the protege of Biggie after Biggie died. It was a rapper called Shine were implicated. Combs was acqu acquitted. Shine was convicted. 
um, never to be heard from again. Shine. That was a song that was like, oh, I said, oh, bobbity, 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 whoa. like the Jamaican song, right? Um, 2013, J. Cole gets involved. J. Cole, J. Cole's on the scene. You never hear stories about J. Cole, by the way. Um, alleged altercation at MTV VMAs, party involving, involving Diddy, J. Cole, Kendrick Lamar, conflicting reports about the, about the cause. Both parties deny a physical fight, no big deal. 2014, allegedly punches Drake straight in the face. That happened. It was at a dispute outside Live Nightclub. I can't tell you how much time I have spent at Live Nightclub. Shout out to Purple. Shout out to Dave Grutman. Shout out to Mo. Shout out to JoJo. Always take care of me. We're there. They own Live Nightclub. Um, live on Sunday. One of the biggest Sunday night parties in the world. Every big hip hop person has performed there. Apparently, um, physical altercation. Combs and eyes punching Drake. But apparently, they maintain friendship. 2015, he fights the UCLA coach. Confrontation with UCLA UCLA coach leads to an altercation during practice. Combs claims self-defense, no assault. Why was he fighting the UCLA coach? Because I'm pretty sure his son, who was just arrested, by the way, was playing football for UCLA. 2019, Gina Hun alleges abuse. Com Combs' ex alleges physical abuse and mental manipulation during their re relationship. Accusations of complaining to her to Cassie and condemning abuse by Comb Circle. I'm sure we'll be hearing more from her. Gina, damn Gina, Hewn. We'll see what happens with that. Then we get to Cassie. Um, Cassie, beautiful girl. One of the best songs of the early 2000s was Cassie, Me and You. Cassie, shout out to you. I can't tell you how much you helped me um, literally get me and you in Miami. Thank you. You can read between the lines there. What a beautiful song right there. But Cassie files federal, federal lawsuit alleging rape and human trafficking during the relationship. The relationship stemmed from 2007 to 2018. $30 million blackmail was alleged. Um, the suit was filed. Get this, Malik. Gorgeous girl. The suit was filed November 16th of... 2023. The suit was settled November 2017. November 2017, 2023. One day settled. I'm sure there's a hush agreement right there. We'll see what happens with there. You know, sort of a little reminiscent of our friend Stormy Daniels. Five days after that, anonymous Syracuse grad alleges drugging, raping, then sex tape coordinating. In 1991, the same week, anonymous woman claims Diddy and Aaron Hall took turns raping her. Allegation, allegation, allegation. What's the old saying? Where there's smoke, where there's fire. Buddy, this house is burning down uh, in Star Island. 2023, anonymous woman files suit against Diddy's house records and Bad Boys Entertainment that apparently they gain raped 17-year-old by Diddy and the president of his company right there. Um, 2023, now we're in current times over here basically. Hulu drops Diddy and the Diddy's Family reality TV show, 18 companies follow suit, terminating partnership with his business called Empower. Um, 2024, now we're literally this year, January 2024, um, Diddy and his liquor company, Ciroc, and the parent company, I believe it's Di Diageo, split ways, claims they mishandled the brand. He had a 50% stake in that. Now they want nothing to do with him. Uh, and then 2024, uh, a few weeks ago, this was basically sort of culminating with what we were talking about with the Tim Dillon podcast on PBD. Um, DJ Lil Rod alleges drugging, sex assault, coercion, grooming, and not compensating him for his work on the Love album. There's a $30 million lawsuit pending. Uh, damn, Diddy. What's that the famous thing? Damn, Daniel. That's it. Damn, Daniel. Damn, Ali. Back at it again. <laughs> Damn, with the Diddy. allegations. These Diddy. allegations um, are getting, um, como se dice en español, muy feo y sucio para Diddy, ugly and disgusting 
for our friend Diddy. I know our friends out there in the back love it when I speak Spanish. Um, there we go. Um, 50 Cent. 50 Cent's been saying some shit about Diddy. Um, he said, 50 Cent said, feds wouldn't have raided Diddy's home unless they got a case. Uh, you know, they say, no face, no case. Well, we all seen Diddy's face on the news. This is what um, 50 Cent had to say. 50 Cent slammed Diddy on Instagram and screenshotted news stories from Fox 11 and TMZ. He said, shit just got real for Diddy. The feds are all up in the cribs. Damn, they got the cuffs. They got the kids in the cuffs. Um, feds all up in the cribs. We'll play that video of Diddy all up in the videos in a second. Um, but I think we should focus on 50 Cent for a second because this guy has been a brilliant storyteller and a truth teller when it comes to what's going down. And he's come straight, point blank, for the head dome for Diddy. So here is some video of 50 and Diddy sort of going back and forth, and we'll get into the late, uh, larger context of that. Um, I believe you have what 50 Cent had to say about take that, take that, Diddy. Go ahead, play that. Yeah. Happy birthday to you. Woo! Happy birthday to you. Woo! Happy birthday. This fabulous. The only nigga that got the name that I want. Uh, well, let's see what 50 Cent had to say. Happy birthday to you. Thank you, my brother. Um, yeah. Let's take like a, a shot for that one. I've been no, uh, no, no, you got I think there's a different video. You know what he's saying is like fruity. Oh, there it is. Thank you, man. Told me the floor is yourself. Hey, yo, Rastafari. Rastafari. Hey, yo. So what did 50 actually say? Because I think there's a larger clip about 50. Maybe you can find that. Um, Longer help is. you guys. Soon you will all be gay and happy. You are all now left under leadership of Puffy Daddy. Report to the nearest rainbow. There the thieves. In theaters, oh, that's <laughs> one. Then the thieves get talking. Yeah, that's mama. <laughs> that's Ice Cube's son, gay? by the way. No, no, no. I'm just saying to you, look, look. You always say Jack's like, that's why you get invited to Puff Party. That's a dude from 300. Listen, listen. So he called him a Fruit Loop, Fruit Cake. What's the name? Yeah. Here it is. The Drink Champs. Yes, yes. He's referring to the Drink Champs. Got it. Oh, man, man. Yo, Skip past back to 50. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Okay. So then, Diddy was on The Breakfast oh, Club. Oh, that's a nice gesture. That's Let good. me get out of No, did, did you take me to what said, a guy oh, says to a nice girl. <laughs> but you've been getting out for over a decade. I remember when you say, the top feels so much I'm better than the bottom. Yeah. 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 I've been saying this. I've been <laughs> saying this. You've been yeah, can we all go? Can I, can I go? When you see, when you see, you see Jay the kids put his head down like, <laughs> while we we it. stuck see, here um, right now, and the camera's rolling. Well, everybody, so see, basically, he's alleging make like it's just some. Um, como se dice en español, en maricón, uh, gay stuff going on with Diddy. Um, Want the video now? Let's play what Diddy had to respond. He's basically saying Diddy is calling, making people call him daddy, or he's calling them daddy. Diddy, daddy, papi, chulo. I don't know what's going on, but let's see what um, Diddy, a.k.a. daddy, a.k.a. puff daddy, a.k.a. puffy had to say. Champs interview. When you was with Nori and Fab and Jada and mm. everybody, they made a compilation video of you because they said you were sounding real suspect. Mm. On the, Sus. On the interview. Suspect. Yeah. Did you see that? Of course nah. I didn't see it. No, nah, I didn't see it. You didn't see it? I swear to God. Oh, Come yeah. on, man. You saw that on world. Hey, hey, and hey, on the tram. Check, check this out. Like now, when they started know. playing like, the game, the pause game, I would definitely... That came from Harlem, too, by yeah, the way. Yeah, came from Harlem. I definitely would say some, oh, my, whoa. The crowd would be like, whoa, did he just say that? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I don't play games. Y'all know. You know what I'm saying? I'm a grown man. I don't play games. But, um... Yeah, Did the you compilation. Go? Nah, I was, I was coming off of being in Miami at night of party, and I don't really remember what I was saying. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Would you like a reminder? Yeah, sure. Play some. Play. Play. Hey, yo, play. listen, yo, I, I love it all. I love it all, man. I like when you like this, Daddy. Yeah, yeah, you put my bed? Daddy, I like when you when oh, you scrambling right and scraping no, for no, no, no. shit. 
That was you. Scrambling. <laughs> <laughs> what? You said, I like when you do it like that, Daddy. <laughs> when you're scrambling and scraping for shit. <laughs> Pause it for a second before response. By the way, you got to give a shout out to Charlemagne right there. He's sitting next to Diddy. You know, Charlemagne gets a lot of love, gets a lot of hate. Sit next to billionaire rapper mogul and being like, what's up, dude? You gay? Play the rest of the clip. Hey, man. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what I was talking about. Hey. Nah, nah. I mean, I was you don't called, go back no, and no, look no. at that stuff and laugh. I mean, it's. I mean, it, it could be funny. I don't really be on it like that. Yeah, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, like, yeah. like. I'm sure know, we can I'm, put Charlemagne's compilation against Diddy's. Compilation. Oh, we have a bunch. We put. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I also, I also don't do it because I know I'm. I know I'm bad at the game. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm I know I say like reckless stuff out my mouth that's just not maybe you know adding up to with somebody who maybe somebody who's homophobic, but I'm not homophobic and I really don't you know care. You know what I'm saying? I just. But um, I'm bad at the game, and it's probably hilarious. I would love to see it. I would love to see the video compilation. It's hilarious. 50, yeah. 50 came up here, and he was giving you flack for the asking Fab the party. So you, he'll ask you, oh, he'll ask you to play it, play it, play the clip, man. Yeah, play the clip. Go ahead. Why won't you party with me for your birthday, man? I, I, yeah, we, we party for my birthday before. You came to my party. You know? No, but me and you ain't never really party, you know what I'm saying? I asked 50 about that, and he said you did the same thing to him. You asked him to take him shopping. Yeah, I thought he needed some clothes. <laughs> <laughs> what? I'm a nice guy. Yo, why, I mean, why are you with him? Just, hey, yo. Why are y'all not? Hey, yo, I don't have no beat. With, 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 I don't know why. With, with, with Fifth, he loves me. Hmm. He loves me. Do y'all really can't have see a beef? It? I mean, y'all can't see No, we can't see Y'all can't it, see man. that he loves me? But see, you really, hold on, you really think that's hate? You really, when you really break it down, you've been out here a long time. You know he loves me. I don't think he like you. You know he loves me. I don't think he like you. Okay. But why? But why not? Y'all just y'all both passionate. Y'all both. I don't know. I, I, yo, check this out. I don't. I don't know. Like y'all both the same. No, we are not. Okay. We, we are not the same. <laughs> but I mean, we are not far cut as the from the same cloth. Work and work hard. Yeah. He's talking and, about and, here. And um, you know, I mean, I respect that. I don't. I don't never hit him with no, you know, nothing. I don't even think of no other man, man. Besides, if I'm thinking about another man, I'm thinking about uplifting. I'm not thinking about all that. All them nats. You know, they, they can't really touch me. Y'all, at the end of the day, y'all see and y'all know what it is. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the track record. Y'all know the business acumen. Y'all know the community service. Y'all know what I'm about, you know. And um, when he does that, it's, 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 it's like funny to me. I don't really take it personal. I know he has a different sense of humor. And he's just not in my life. We don't have to never cross paths. And um, I will never say nothing negative about him, you know, because that's just not me. It feels like something must have happened, though, like that. We yeah. just don't know Got about it. behind All right, He cool. loves me. <clears throat> so 50, keeping it real, all up in the club, bottles full of bub. Um, go, shorty, it's your birthday. Um, but clearly, 50 shit. <laughs> you know, they say when you come for the king, you better not miss. 50 didn't miss. I don't even, like, literally, if you ask me to recap what Diddy said right there, all I got was, come on, man, you know the track record. Uh, you know what's going on. 50's like, uh, I think he's gay. Um, very weird stuff that's going on right there. Nothing wrong with being gay, if that's what you want to do, Diddy. But when you st start doing sex trafficking, when you start doing rape, minors, that's when the law is going to come in. By the way, speaking of people calling out Diddy, Cat Williams has resurfaced, right? One of the biggest comedians in the world early 2000s, you know, right on the heels of Dave Chappelle, um, Cat Williams came and just put his, planted his flag, put his fork in the ground, and just went on Shannon Sharp's podcast, Club Shay Shay, and he did not mince any words when it came to Diddy. Roll the clip. I've had to turn down $50 million four times. Four times just to protect my integrity and that virgin hole I was telling you about. <laughs> right, because uh, P. Diddy be wanting to body. And you got to tell him no. Oh, you got to tell him no. I've had to turn down $50 um, million dollars four times. What? Four huh. times, we got just that. to protect my integrity. Um, did you catch the joke right there? I don't even think it was a joke. Yeah. 
I think Cat Williams is spitting facts. He's spitting truth. And he's basically saying, uh, Diddy, Diddy wants the hole. And it's not the hole that you think that um, Diddy's been looking for. Um, Cal Williams said, I got to protect my integrity and land that virgin hole I was telling you about. Because Diddy be wanting to party, and I got to tell him no. Sorry, bro. Got to tell you no. Um, and I got the receipts for everything I'm telling you. When someone says they got the receipts, I'd be careful going to the bank with that one. Um, that is what's going on with all the allegations and the story and respected people that Diddy would have affiliated with, 50, Cat Williams, Fabulous, Charlemagne, Nasogu, Nasogu. Um, where do we go from here? So let's talk a little bit about um, the evolution of Diddy, the evolution of hip hop, and why I think um, a lot of the stories that really culminated in the 90s between Biggie and Tupac, why potentially Diddy was the centerpiece or the kingpin behind all of it. So uh, we're going to show a video in a second of PBD interviewing the guy that was the agent that was on the Tupac murder case. We're going to show you um, in a second basically who Diddy was and um, who Suge Knight was. Um, here's what I'll say about this. Um, why do I know so much about this? Um, why do I know so much about what's going on with Diddy? Quite frankly, pretty simply, because I love hip hop, straight up. Uh, I remember being kindergarten, 1986-ish, 1987, whatever it was, and the older kids in my neighborhood were listening to hip hop. And there was a song that came on that a six-year-old would be like, oh, that's cool, what is that? That song for me, was a song by the Beastie Boys, Beastie Boys called Brass Monkey, that funky monkey, uh. Do you know about the Beastie Boys? Oh, yeah, I know a little bit. There's some raw-ass white boys. Oh, yeah, definitely. That's right. Uh, brass Monkey, that funky monkey. I'm like, what the hell is a brass monkey? I don't care what's going on with this chunky monkey looking kind of clunky. I like this hip-hop thing. And all of a sudden, I start listening to more hip-hop. Boom, MC Hammer shows up, can't touch this. What? You have no idea. There is no bigger star today than what MC Hammer was in the 90s. Not even close. And then after MC Hammer, some dude like named Vanilla Ice shows up on the scene. Doom, 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 Ice, ice, baby, too cold. You know about that? Oh, yeah. He was too cold. <laughs> Took over the world. MC Hammer, Vanilla Ice. Hip-hop went mainstream. Hip-hop started off in the Bronx in Brooklyn, in New York, um, in Queens, all around there. And it was, it started off as a block party. It started off as fun. You know, you had Grandmaster Flash, you had Rakim, you had, um, I said a hip hop, the hibbit, the hibbit to the hop, hip hop, it don't stop, to the bang bang boogie, say up jumps the boogie, to the rhythm of the boogie, the beat, the furious fight. I mean, it was just fun, it was great, it was amazing and hip hop started to become mainstream. Um, what ended up happening, hip hop started blowing up, but then it took a turn. And then in the 90s, you know, the, the famous quote about Bill Clinton in the 90s from uh, James Carville, it was called the Raging Cajun, he said, what, what, what didn't you like about the 90s, the peace or the prosperity? The 90s was a great time in America, why? Communism just ended. Reagan, Mr. Gorbachev, tear down that wall. We saw what happened there. You know, this was before 9-11. So before, before the global war on terror became a thing. Before really, you know, starting in 2000, which was Gore versus Bush in Florida, in Tallahassee. I was in college there. I was an intern at the Capitol after 2000, Republicans and Democrats 
cats and dogs. Before that, it wasn't that contentious. Um, now, you know, the, the, the pervasive theme that is happening right now is Eastern civilization, Western civilization, clash of cultures. That's all going on since 2000. But do you not want to know what the biggest beef in the country, potentially even the world was in the 90s? East Coast, West Coast rap. And at the head of the East Coast was Biggie, a.k.a. Biggie Smalls, a.k.a. I love it when you call me Big Papa. Uh, and his producer, right-hand man, owner of Bad Boy Records, was Diddy. On the West Coast, you had Tupac. Thug Life, hit him up. Um, California, you know the hits from Tupac. Um, by the way, PBD's favorite rapper of all time. If you've ever seen the painting uh, in PBD's office, now in his home, MLK, Einstein, Senna, Tupac. These are some of PBD, our CEO's uh, inspirations, one of them being Tupac. So what ended up happening in the 90s was it became beef. And rap, hip-hop, words, lyrics, songs turned into actual beef in the 90s. So Tupac did a song about Biggie, hit him up. That's why, I, yo, bit, get money, hit him up. Like, it got so ugly. Um, Suge Knight at the Source Awards basically went on stage and called out Diddy directly. I think we have that clip. Yeah, yeah. Fast forward a little bit because you can play this song. First of all, I'd like to thank God. Second of all, I'd like to thank my whole entire Defo family on both sides. You know what I'm saying? I'd like to tell Tupac to keep his guards up. We ride with him. And one other thing I'd like to say any artist out there want to be an artist and want to stay a star. Don't want to, don't want to have to worry about the executive producer trying to be all, all in the videos, the videos, all on the record, dancing, Woo! come to death row. Okay, so if you don't know who he's referencing, if you don't want the producer all up in the video, Diddy used to be all in the video doing this thing. Malik, you know this dance? You know the Diddy dance? <laughs> Diddy bop. You got that? <laughs> Let me see what you got. Come on, Malik. <laughs> You're not going to dance? Right now. I got it right here, though. You're not going to give me one of these? Come on, Malik. What do you got? Yeah, there you go. Uh, uh. <laughs> take that, take that. So on the East Coast, Diddy is trying to become a full-on businessman and build a business. And respect to him for that. Because Suge Knight was a straight-up thug, thug life, death row records. Meanwhile, Diddy is trying to do business. And I think we have that. Probably his most famous video of Diddy doing his thing, calling himself a savage. I know that Megan the Stallion considers herself, she's a savage, but Diddy was the original savage. Roll the tape. Bro, let me tell you something. Allegations aside, any entrepreneur that wants to make something with their life, if you want to think big, dream big, make some yourself, that's the juice right there. That's the sauce. Welcome to the sauce cast, y'all. That's where it's at. But I don't know where it went from that hungry, I, I want this, to I got this, to now I can do whatever I want, right? It's a God complex, Messiah complex. When you're Addicted a billionaire, you've accomplished everything. What happens there? What were you going to say? Addicted to power. You get power hungry. Like, you, you want more of it. You can only get more. I don't think there's, there's a limit to how yep. much power somebody well, can get. What did Kanye say about power? No, no man, man, man shall, shall have, have all this power. Uh, uh. Exactly. All right, so we all know one thing, y'all. Malik won't dance, but he'll sing a little bit. Just a little bit. Okay. Um, so that was basically what happened between Biggie and Tupac, and that culminated with the death killings of Tupac first and then Biggie. Now, PBD interviewed 
uh, the lead agent on the Tupac case. We played this clip earlier on the PBD podcast. We're going to play it for you now. Roll that tape. Behind all of this is, is, uh, is Puffy. You've said this yourself with a million dollars, whether it was a million dollars, whether it was a half a million dollars. Tell us a little bit about that. What I believe happened with, with Puffy was that, again, I, I don't think he wanted this conflict to get worse than it already was. And if he could figure out a way to quell that, he would. In fact, uh, we have a statement saying that Puffy had reached out to um, the members of the Nation of Islam to approach Suge Knight and say, hey, let's have a peace treaty, let's squash this thing. But Suge wanted nothing to do with it. So he was trying to get out from under this imposing threat knowing that Suge held him responsible for the murder of his friend and whenever he would come to LA he knew that Suge Knight was trying to hunt him down. Uh, we have a, re a reported incident, an investigation where Suge Knight had accosted one of his associates at a Christmas party in Los Angeles and they beat the living shit out of this guy. He almost lost his eye in an attempt uh, for these guys to um, gain knowledge about where he lived in Los Angeles. Uh, so he undoubtedly becomes aware of the fact that these guys are actively hunting me mm. down. They're kidnapping, assaulting people. Uh, my life's definitely in harm's way. And so I think that out of that desperation and fear, he turned to the streets and said, can you guys kind of handle this for me? Um, because he knew that if you're going to deal with these gang members, then the best thing to do is get their natural enemies to, you know, to, uh, to do the work for you. And is that the million dollars? The million dollars was on the... A according to Keith E.D., he says there was a kind of a loose conversations at Greenblatt's up on Sunset in which Puffy uh, allegedly tells Keith E.D., um, listen, I'm gonna, whatever, it whatever it takes to get these guys off my back, I need you to take care of them. He says we wanted a million dollars. Diddy's like, whatever. But again, I have to couch that with the understanding that he was in fear for his life. I, I fully that, get that. Yeah. yeah. I fully get that. So, but the million dollars is from him, but you don't know really if it's a million dollars or it's a half a million dollars. Because I think it's just boastful talking. Okay, got you it. You know, it's like I saw, if I see a, a really nice car that I like to purchase from you, and I just, man, I'll give you a million dollars for that. Yeah. It's just that kind okay. of like loose. So um, how about the part where, where Zip gives him the gun, he says, listen, that right now is the time to do it. Everyone's in town, go to 662. Mm -hmm. Here's a gun that I have. He leaves it to him with the car. Right. Uh, uh, he gives him the gun. And then afterwards, when they talk on a call, he says, was that us? And they're on the call together listening. And Zip says, yes, that was us. Keefe says, yes, that was us. Yes, that was us. Yeah. Keefe says, that was mm -hmm. us. And then, then he says, we'll take care. Zip says, we'll take care of the money. Six weeks later, he's not getting the money. And, you know, he's finding out maybe he didn't get paid. And then afterwards, he meets with an associate of P. Diddy, saying, Puffy, saying, yeah, we did pay, but, but Zip the kept money. it. And then when they met, is that all been verified that maybe he did keep the money or they did not pay? We don't have anything to validate other than his claim. Got it. He's claiming that he had people that were closely associated with Eric, that, uh, with Zip, that told him, hey, Puffy paid a half a million dollars and uh, Zip kept the money. So that's his claim. Uh, we do know that these two people do exist and that they were associated with him, but those people have never verified that. Uh, so that, uh, that unpaid debt is, uh, it was definitely never collected. Got it. So why, so why were you removed from the case in 2009? Thanks, Malik. Um, again, allegations. Um, like I told you before, you never want the word allegedly attached to your name. Um, couple last, sec last things and then we're going to wrap up today and I appreciate you guys being with us sticking through this because I know we're kind of all over here. Let's try to bring this bad boy home. Bad boy home, all right? Um, <laughs> what actually culminated was after Biggie's murder, which preceded by Tupac's murder, uh, the East Coast, West Coast rap beef sort of subdued, right? And then rap basically took over the country. Um, Puffy did arguably his biggest song ever with Biggie's wife, where her name was Faith Evans. You know the song? Talking about missing you? I'll be missing you, right? Mm -hmm. uh, Sting remix, uh, massive song, blew up, and that solidified Diddy as an artist 
to himself. Um, and then he did All About the Benjamins, baby. You know, we All About the Benjamins, baby. And I was like, oh, shit, what are the Benjamins? Who? Benjamin Franklin? Benjamin Franklin's a $100 bill. I like that one. Save that money. Make that money. All we talk is money. Um, I like that. Um, so then here's what happened. And this is sort of my story in conjunction with the Diddy story. My first job out of college, I worked for Clear Channel Radio, which is now turned into iHeartMedia. And I worked in sales. Uh, they said if you can sell air, you can sell anything. Um, and I was selling airtime. But also, I was doing some on-air talent stuff. And basically what I learned was this, especially about hip-hop, because we owned a hip-hop channel at the time here in South Florida. Um, the radio stations liked Diddy. Because basically, here's how it works in, hi in hip-hop. Malik, you can fact check this. Um, if the streets are not feeling you at all, you're never going to make it in hip-hop. But if the record companies, or specifically the radio companies, the radio stations, the distribution sources won't play your stuff, it, you're almost sort of underground. What Diddy was able to do, and other rappers like that were able to do, was just be enough street cred, but not too hard for the radio. Not too hard, not too soft. And Biggie, I'm sorry, and Diddy was all up in the radio, all up in the video, and he was doing his thing. You know, at this time, hip hop blew up from East Coast, West Coast, North and South. You know, Atlanta, you got Outkast, you got Goody Mob in Houston, you got what, MJK and um, Mike Jones. Uh, B, who? UGK, Mike Jones, who? The one and you can't clone. You got who? DJ Screw. DJ Screw in Atlanta, DJ you got Ludacris. Yeah, Luda. You got DMX that surfaced. That's New um, York. Was that? That's New York. Got New DMX is New York. Yeah. Nas is New York. Jay Z, hello, arguably took the mantle of the greatest rapper alive after Biggie died. So hip hop became national, international, global. Um, and what had happened with Diddy? By the way, can you go to that um, most powerful people in hip hop, just to give you some context? So Diddy went from all we make is hits to all we make is money. I understand that work because I'm in the radio business right there. Then I was in the nightlife business, um, and I was in the nightlife. I saw Ciroc call up in the club. A buddy of mine that I used to play basketball with was the main guy for Ciroc. And I would see Diddy out in the club or at Live. He'd be out there popping the bottles. And he went from basically making hits to making money. Um, now I'll just be candid with you. Uh, I've never met, shook Diddy's hand. You know how, like, you're in a club. I might be at a table over here, but you'll be at a table over there, VIP section. I've seen Diddy. I've seen Ciroc. I've been to house parties. Um, here's the thing you got to understand when people make stories up, allegations. Um, there's a big difference between attending a party and attending the party. Like, I've been on the lawn, in the backyard, all up in the video, but I wasn't in the house, and I certainly wasn't in the master bedroom. By the way, in LA, I've been to the Playboy Mansion a few times. I was in the grotto. I was hanging with the celebrities outside on the lawn. I said, hey, what's going on in the house? They go, don't worry about it. You're not invited in the house, okay? So there's certain people that get access to the house and certain people that go outside. Believe me, if the drinks are free, there's some beautiful women, I'll hang outside, I'm good but you don't know what's going on upstairs in the house. So that's who we need to hear from. So yeah, um, so I was gonna ask you, so those people that were quote unquote in the house upstairs, you think those people are gonna be held accountable for the, the actions that Didi was caused? Like they are accomplices. No, no, no. Just cause you're in the house at a party doesn't mean you're an accomplice, but you saw some shit, yeah. you know some shit, you know some stories. But people close to Diddy, people, his right hand people, people who follow his, his orders Buddy, directly. if this thing turns to what it could be. If this is the new OJ trial of the 2020s, you know, Johnny Depp was kind of teetering on that, but innocent, that didn't happen. If Diddy, by the way, caught a flight to Antigua, where is he, what's going on? OJ, Ford Bronco with AC, what's going on there? By the way, 
uh, OJ, he's still looking for the killers. Uh, buddy, I got a good place for you to look. Uh, in, the in the mirror. OJ, I like my OJ with no straw. When you give it to me, give it to me raw. Method Man, Wu-Tang, we got to give those guys a shout out. Hello, Malik, where were you on that one? Um, 25 most powerful names in hip hop. Um, at the time they did this, this was in what year? 2013? This is 2013. Okay. Go through that list. By the way, New Orleans, Master P, we know that. Um, everything that came from the Nolia that was going on there in New Orleans, just go to the very bottom. We're just going to do the top five. Number one, I believe, was Baby, a.k.a. Birdman. That's what's going on in... Those are the guys that started Lil Wayne, Juvenile, the Hot Boys, um... Yeah, the Birdman and Slim Williams. Cash Money Records. Cash Money Records, exactly. Um, keep going up. Number two, Jay-Z. You know, Jay-Z famously said, I'm not a businessman. I'm a business man. He's a billionaire. By the way, just goes all you guys in the uh, black pill world, you know, red pill, what have you, uh, Jay-Z, they say, looks like a fucking camel. But this guy can rap and he can flow. And he's a billionaire, and he got uh, uh, Beyonce. Should have put a ring on it, right? Um, number three was who? <coughs> I.E., president of Jeff Dam. Got it. Damn. Number three, Damn. keep going. Number four, Dr. Dre and Jimmy Levine. Got it, keep going. Number five, number five Kanye. Kanye West at the time, you know, protege of number two, Jay-Z. Who's number six? Roll the tape. You got Diddy. Diddy is a made man in the hip hop world. This could potentially be the biggest thing ever to happen to hip hop. One of the Mount Rushmore figureheads could potentially be going to jail for the rest of his life. Uh, take that, take that. Bad boy for life on death row records. We'll see what happens with that. So Diddy turned from Hustler, entrepreneur, startup, hit maker, businessman, mogul, billionaire. And do you know who his mentor was? Speaking about FTM, follow the money. Do you know who it was? None other than billionaire, one of the richest men in the world, Ray Dalio. Ray Dalio, I'm not saying anything that Ray Dalio had anything to do with this. But Ray Dalio, if you scroll down... Billionaire Ray Dalio talks being Diddy's mentor in new interview. You asked who's coming on the stand? Ray Dalio. You know who else is coming on the stand? Dre. You know who else is coming on the stand? Snoop. You know who else is coming on the stand? Cassie. You know who else is coming on the stand? Every single major name you know Gotta put Jay -Z that is affiliated team. with Diddy. Jay-Z that might be there. Cat Williams is going to be there. 50 Cent is going to be there. All these people know a little something about something. You know, the, one of my favorite movies is Something About Mary. Something About Diddy is going on at this freaking point. So allegations, allegations, allegations. We'll see where we go from here. Um, before we wrap up, let's see where that poll is at right now. All right, yes. So uh, that poll, it finished at a uh, 65% uh, guilty F, then 32% innocent until proven guilty, then 3% was Diddy innocent. I ran another one too now, just out of curiosity. Yep. It's, it's still going. It was, is Diddy alone in these allegations? I think I got the first choice as Diddy is the kingpin, and then the second choice is he's just a pawn in a larger plan. And actually, the majority of the people are saying that he's just a pawn in a larger, a larger plan. Okay. Like Diddy's just a fall guy, a lot of people believe. For... Who? For, you know, for something larger that, that's even bigger than Diddy himself. Go ahead. You have every ability right now to be a coincidence theorist, conspiracy theorist. Who's he taking the fall for? Uh, How many people in hip-hop are worth a billion dollars? How many people in Diddy's world are worth more than him? Not many. Ray Dalio? I don't know. What could he possibly be taking the fall for? The fall guy. I can't think of what it would be. The thing you got to know about Diddy, do you know where P Diddy stands politically? Left. Does he? Is he? Seems like a capitalist to me. I don't know 
where Diddy stands politically. It's usually when you make outlandish political comments is where they come for you, where the matrix starts attacking for you. When the globalist, the World Economic Forum, comes for you. Ray Dalio is part of the Economic Forum, World Economic Forum, Davos. I don't know about that, guys. I'd like to know your theories. Put that in the comment below. Um, you have something to add to that? Uh, yeah, I was reading this article earlier. Allegedly, Prince Harry somehow tied to these Diddy allegations as well. Yeah, it's, it's pretty wild. Like, this could be like some hearsay, but I, there was an article. I'm going to try to find it and pull it up here. But Prince Harry was tied to these Diddy allegations. Prince Harry. Yeah. And, like, the thing is, I think people don't also understand, like, Diddy, like, he's still under a record label. He's still under that umbrella of a record label itself. So there's somebody he's still answering to. There's somebody still writing P. Diddy a check. I don't think he's just the, the, the guy, the evil mastermind behold this, beside, well, under this whole plot. There's always somebody writing the check. Um, but the difference is, you know, Shaq had a famous story one time when he said, um, you know, I'm rich, right? Shaq's worth, I don't know, half a billion dollars at this point. You never hear stories about Shaq like that, by the way. He said, I'm rich. But Jerry Buss, who owns the Lakers, he's wealthy. He's cutting my checks. I don't know who's cutting Diddy checks these days. He's cutting the checks for a lot of these people. He was 50% partnership with Ciroc Diageo. I don't know. But that's the beautiful thing about stories breaking on the next Sauzcast. We'll see what happens. I got that Diddy. Prince Harry thing I was telling you about, too. Okay, go. Yeah, so this article was from the Independent UK. I've, I've seen it on a, other, a couple other sources as well, but it's saying Prince Harry's name in this $30 million Sean Combs okay. sexual assault lawsuit. Well, I have three words for you, Malik. We shall see. We shall see. Um, let me leave you guys with this. Let me gather my thoughts for a second and give you a final message to my friends out there, Valuetainment fans, Saucecast fans, Sauce fans, Malik, who can't dance, fans. You got dance in your pants. Dance in your pants. Um, one of the most powerful quotes I've ever read is by a guy called Jack Bogle. We'll pull him up. Jack Bogle started a company called Vanguard. Vanguard is one of the largest, if not the largest. That is not a good picture of my friend Jack. Let's see if there's anything else. Um, Jack Bogle died when he was in his late 90s, right before COVID. Um, I read his book, The Bogleheads Guide to Investing. And, you know, he said a few things. And I'm going to give you two of them right now and the one major quote. Basically, you know, in the book, he said, you ready to invest? You ready to invest? Great. Well, you need to do these three things first. Have a game plan for your money. Get out of debt. And save that money. That's how you can invest. But then he said one other thing. He said, my one wish, now you can go back to when he wasn't looking as good. My one wish before I die is this, that I die with my reputation intact. I die with my reputation intact. Everyone, no matter how small, how big you are, you're creating a legacy. Whether that's with a family, whether that's with kids, whether that's with a business, whether that's with philanthropy, whether that's through your endeavors, it's your name lasting beyond your life. And that when you die, your reputation, you pray that it is intact. Let me tell you something, guys. It might take five years. It might take 10 years. It might take 50 years. But if you do some hellacious, scandalous, evil ass shit, your reputation will not die intact. You hear me? Bill Cosby, you hear me, Bernie Madoff, you hear me, Jeffrey Epstein, you hear me, Harvey Weinstein, you hear me, potentially, Diddy. We'll see what happens here. Um, I still believe in innocent until proven guilty, but as my abuela will say down in Miami, no go, there's no go. For our friend Diddy, it is fair to say that Diddy has been a bad boy for life. Um, 
That's what I got for you guys on this episode. Thank you for being here. A couple quick announcements um, that is going on right now and this weekend. Number one, if you want to connect with me, with PBD, with the BizDoc, with Vinny, with a whole host of business leaders, great thinkers, influencers, if you've got a problem, they've got a solution, and you can find us on Manect. It's right here. Um, Manect's been amazing. Shout out to PBD. Shout out to the team on Manect. Um, it's been incredible helping, consulting, coaching all you guys out there on your life problems, your business problems, your relationship problems, your money problems. Um, but hopefully none of you have some Diddy problems. Last thing, uh, this weekend, you guys are invited. If you're lucky enough to be living in South Florida, we're doing a huge event in Miami, a valuetainment pop-up at a massive event in South Beach, Playa del Sur, called Maro Volleyball. Uh, Maro Volleyball is going on this weekend March 30th and 31st in South Beach, 18th and Collins. Be there, be square. The Valuetainment team last year, PBD, did the opening coin toss. Maybe he'll be doing it this year. We'll see. I'll be there interviewing a ton of people, influencers, celebrities, models. Um, the Valuetainment team will be there. All your favorite people, Vinny, Brady, the mouthpiece. I think the BizDoc is showing up in a Borat Speedo bikini. I don't know. I, I can't confirm or deny that, but I'd love to see BizDoc showing off what goods he's got. Um, that's one hot piece of ass, the BizDoc <laughs> out there. Uh, so we'll be there, model volleyball, and here's the catch. You know, you're like, Saz, what's the catch? Valuetainment, models, chicks, celebrities, influencers. This has to be a pretty penny. This has to cost a lot of money. Hit me with it, Saz. Hit me with it, Saz. Take that, take that. How much is it worth, Malik? Well, it's free. It's open to the public, and we'd love to see you there this weekend. Valuetainment at Model Volleyball in South Beach. And I checked the weather, and it's going to be looking lovely. Um, that is it for the Sawscast today. Thank you, guys for being here. Um, it's okay to be a bad boy sometimes. The ladies like the bad boys, but not this particular bad boy. Um, call your mom and tell your lover because you need to be a good boy. Thank you guys for being here. Save that money and save that reputation and go do great things in this world. We'll see you Thursday with a massive panel. Subscribe to the channel. We'll see you next time. We're out. It's the SARS cast, baby.